Our next speaker is uh, Jared Yo Younger. Uh, Jared's assistant professor and director of the Adult and Pediatric Pain Lab at Stanford. Uh, he received his uh, PhD at the University of Tennessee in Knoxville. Uh, he, did a, he was a postdoc at Arizona State. Uh, and now he's a, uh, then was a postdoc at Stanford and now is on the faculty at Stanford. He has numerous peer-reviewed journal articles, reviews, and book chapters. He was recipient of the 2011 Research Award from the American Academy of Pain Medicine. And he's going to talk this morning about low-dose naltrexone for the treatment of fibromyalgia. Okay, so... I want to tell a story today about a novel way of treating chronic pain. And I'm going to be focusing specifically on, is the microphone working okay? Speaker okay? Yeah? Okay. I'm going to be focusing specifically on fibromyalgia pain. But this is something that may also have implications for other types of pain and a lot of other different conditions. So there's uh, four chapters, there's four parts to this story. And I also want to mention that I will be talking about the off-label use of naltrexone. And there's no commercial interests uh, on this product. Um, as far as I know, this is completely generic. There's no formulation in the 4.5 milligram dosage. Uh, so this is completely generic and, and anyone can get this. So I'm going to start with chapter one which is the tell of two affinities. So there's an assumption that we make when we're thinking about classic medications. And that is, if you give a small dose of something, you get a small effect. And if you give a large dose of something, you get a large effect, right? That's something that we don't even really think about. So you start small, you increase the dosage, and as you increase that, at some point, you're gonna start to get a clinically beneficial effect. And that's the beginning of our therapeutic window. And then if we increase that even further, we start to get side effects that limit the beneficial action of the drug that we're giving. And then if we continue to increase it even further, we get to a point where the adverse effects completely wipe out the clinical beneficial effects. And we don't want to increase past that point. So this is something that we don't even really think about. Now, the implication of this is that there's no reason why we would ever want to give a dosage multiple times higher than that clinical beneficial range. And there's also no reason why we'd ever want to give a dosage multiple times lower than it, because it wouldn't have any kind of effect on, on the patient, right? Well, I think that this model works really well for the majority of drugs, almost every drug. But it doesn't work well for opioids. In fact, opioids do not fit this model. And that's because they have a very peculiar property. And that is, if you give a normal dose of an opioid, you get a classic analgesic effect. And if you decrease the dose, that effect goes away and it starts to look a lot like saline. But if you decrease the dose even more, you get the opposite effect. So very, very low doses of an opioid will actually cause hyperalgesia, the opposite effect. And we've known this for about 25 years. This is a study in arthritic rats, given a typical dose, and I think this is intrathecal, it might have been IV. At a typical dose, you get analgesia, you lower the dose, you get no effect at all, but you continue to lower the dose, and you get an increase of pain sensitivity. And this is a strange thing that opioids do. So as one example, you can use a laser to stimulate rats' tails, and after about four to five seconds, they'll flick their tail. If you do an intrathecal injection of saline, that doesn't change anything at all. You can measure them at multiple time points, and you'll still get that four to five second latency before they flick their tail. But if you give them a typical dosage of morphine, you'll see potent analgesia. So what you'll see is it takes a longer stimulus for them to have that pain response. But if you give a really low dosage of the morphine, what you'll see instead is hyperalgesia, about a 50% reduction in their pain tolerance. So it takes less stimulus, less time, for them to have a pain response. And you can see this in a variety of modalities. There's been many, many studies. This is scientific fact. This is a strange thing that opioids do that we've seen time and time. 